Hello and welcome to this video on the field effect transistor, or the FET. In previous videos, we have introduced the topic of semiconductors, specifically the construction of the PN junction, and how that applies to diodes and bipolar junction transistors. If you haven't watched those videos already, I recommend going back and watching those first, before this video on the field effect transistor. The field effect transistor differs from the bipolar junction transistor, which we covered in our previous video, in a few key ways, which we'll outline in this video. It's an evolution of the bipolar junction transistor, and functions slightly differently. FETs are usually classed as what we call J-FETs, or junction field effect transistors, or MOSFETs, which stands for metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors. In this particular video, we're going to focus on J-FETs. You can see, first of all, that the naming of the connections to the transistor is different on a FET as opposed to a bipolar junction transistor. When we looked at bipolar junction transistors, the connections were labelled as the emitter, the collector, and the base. Here, they're labelled as the gate, the drain, and the source. One of the key differences of a JFET compared to a bipolar junction transistor is that JFETs are voltage controlled devices. Bipolar junction transistors are considered to be a current controlled device. We recall um, the current gain, beta, which we outlined in our previous video, and the fact that we can apply a small current to the base in order to draw a large current from the collector to the emitter. Another difference is that JFETs are unipolar compared to bipolar junction transistors. We'll see why when we look at the construction of the bipolar junction transistor as compared to the JFET in just a second. The JFET also functions by using reverse bias operation compared to the forward bias operation of a bipolar junction transistor. Again, we'll show some diagrams as to why this is important. But remember that we needed to apply a positive current uh, to the base of the transistor in a, in a bipolar junction transistor in order to create a current from the collector to the emitter. It's actually a negative voltage that we're going to apply to the JFET. The last difference that's worth pointing out is that the JFET has a very high input impedance. The impedance of the gate is high when operating compared to the base of a bipolar junction transistor, which has a very low impedance. We recall that the base, uh, the base to emitter section of a bipolar junction transistor in our previous video was a forward biased PN junction. And so it has a very low impedance and allows very high current to flow potentially. And so bipolar junction transistors are very easily damaged by high currents. Only a very small current should be applied to the base of a bipolar junction transistor. Let's outline some of the advantages and disadvantages of JFETs. First of all, JFETs have the property of temperature stability, which is improved over bipolar junction transistors. The high input impedance results in low input current and this makes them more efficient and provides more gain. They're also smaller and more compact. Some of the disadvantages is that JFETs have a slower switching time. They're slightly less responsive. And similarly, they have poor performance at higher frequencies. We can classify JFETs as N-channel or P-channel much like we could classify bipolar junction transistors as NPN or PNP. Just like in our last video, rather than looking at both, we're going to focus on one, and we're going to focus on N-channel JFETs. Here's a diagram of the construction of an N-channel JFET you can see that it consists of P and N type dope semiconductor uh, silicon material. 
We can also see that the N channel JFET is named as such because it consists of a channel of N type material running from the drain to the source. What this means is that unlike bipolar junction transistors, the JFET is what we call normally on. It can conduct straight away because there's no reverse bias junction preventing current from the drain to the source. Current can flow by default as it were. So current can flow even when there is no input at the gate. In our previous video, we covered that PN junctions form a depletion region, and it's exactly the same for a field effect transistor. The N channel is surrounded by this P-type material, which sits around it. And we know that these two uh, doped materials, when they meet, form a region called the depletion region. This depletion region narrows the available N channel. You can see that we've now constricted the amount of space in the center. As the depletion region grows, that N channel will get smaller. Remember that we operate the field effect transistor in reverse bias. Rather than applying a positive voltage to the gate, as we did in a bipolar junction transistor, we're going to apply a negative voltage to the gate. This reverse biases the PN junction. When we reverse bias the PN junction, just like in a diode, we expand the depletion region. And this pinches the N channel. There's now even less space in the N channel for current to flow freely. Similarly, we can increase the negative voltage applied to the gate. And this will increase the depletion region further and eventually close it altogether. So this reduces current flow between the drain and the source. We're controlling the current by applying a negative voltage to the gate. If the voltage to the gate is sufficiently large and negative, the channel will eventually close entirely and current cannot flow. We mentioned one of the advantages of JFETs as having a high input impedance. And we can see why in this diagram. Because the PN junction encountered by the gate is reverse biased, the impedance is very high. Remember, we're applying a negative voltage to the gate. And so just like our negative uh, reverse biased diode has the negative applied to the P-type material, likewise, we're encountering a reverse biased PN junction. And this means that the impedance is very, very high, typically in the mega ohms. The device is controlled by voltage. And the reason this is the case, and not by current, is because of this high resistance. The gate current is actually so small because of the high resistance that it's negligible. And so it's actually the voltage that's controlling the transistor's operation here, and not the current like in a bipolar junction transistor. There are some key advantages of this high input impedance. It makes the input less susceptible to damage from high currents. Remember that the bipolar junction transistor operates in a forward biased manner, and that means that very high currents could easily flow through the transistor and damage it. This isn't the case in JFETs because of their reverse bias operation, very little current can flow through the gate. Because of the, in the input current being so low, the input power is also low. FETs provide a high power gain, since they consume low input power, but they can still produce high output power. So I hope you found this video useful. First of all, on the application of PN junctions to the construction of junction field effect transistors. And then also some of their applications and advantages and disadvantages.